Good morning, good afternoon, and welcome to our webinar, Innovate and Create. I'm Amanda Seeger, I'm your host today, and I'm with Blue Jeans by Verizon. And this is the third webinar in our three-part SMB webinar series, The New Online Non-Negotiables, hosted by Blue Jeans by Verizon and Yahoo Small Business. So uh, just a couple housekeeping notes before we get started. We are all uh, on the Blue Jeans events platform. And as an attendee, you are joined uh, in view and listen only mode. However, we do want uh, you to engage with us and we encourage you to talk to us throughout this session. So if you take a look on the right hand side of your screen, there's a couple features uh, and icons that I wanna point out. So there's a little uh, chat icon. So if you would like to engage with us at any point, just throw uh, any chat in there. We also have a polling second to the bottom. So uh, we might throw up a couple polls, please engage with us there. Um, and then lastly, there's a Q&A icon. We'll get those answered at the end. Um, and if there's anything pertinent throughout our discussion, um, we'll uh, throw those out to the speakers as well. But lastly, this webinar will be recorded and shared post-event. So we'll send out an email with this recording um, along with any other resources that might be useful for um, for you as small business owners. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, I have the pleasure of introducing our guests today. We have Gina and Jennifer Varicella. They are the co-founders of the Bra Lab and Brad, uh, Brad Dorsey, Marketing Operations Manager at Yahoo Small Business. So welcome guys. Thank you. Hi, thank you so much. So today we're gonna to be discussing uh, product development, manufacturing and product launch challenges and solutions that small businesses have had to endure Last few months, and the Bra Lab has been operating as a successful e commerce store for over four years. But the team has recently had to adapt new virtual ways of working in traditionally hands on go to market processes. So, first part of our conversation here, um, Dina and Jennifer, can you tell us a little bit about the Bra Lab, your new products, your new swimwear line, and how COVID has really impacted your normal product development process? Yeah, so um, thanks again for having us. We're excited to share our story. Um, so we started with the Bra Lab after being in the retail industry and noticing a huge disconnect between the bras that were available and the clothing that we were buying. Um, women would just always come up to us and say, there's no bra to wear with this outfit, so I'm not gonna buy it. So we come from a family of entrepreneurs and people that think outside the box a lot. So it's really ingrained in us. And we kind of took this venture on to recreate the bra and innovate it to match modern women's needs. Um, so what we came up with was a bra that clasps on the sides. So you have the cuffs and then the back straps. So allowing it to clasp on the sides gives it a really supportive um, for women and then a clean look across your back. So you can really wear it with any outfit um, that you need. So, and then Jen, if you want to elaborate on the next. Yeah, so we started with this idea just to create a solution for women to have a multi-way bra. And then um, we've been growing our online business. And we recently had an opportunity with a huge manufacturer to help us fan the line. But right as this was happening, um, I was like, you know, the factories are in uh, abroad in Sri Lanka. so. I was literally had bought my ticket almost. I got a couple of vaccines and then COVID hit. And so we canceled our trip and we were, you know, working on developing 10 new cup styles, a whole swimwear line, all this stuff that would be a lot easier to do in person. You can touch and feel the fabrics, try it on, um, get it done a lot faster. So we immediately had to pivot away from <laughs> in person to we immediately subscribed to Blue Jeans. <laughs> And they use it as well. So we started, you know, just doing these all these fittings and virtual meetings, uh, developing our new lines. So um, sorry, Brad. The <laughs> the actual <laughs> bra itself probably isn't super relevant to you, but um, you know, just well, you know, I have I have women in my family and individuals right. who I interact with, so I can. <laughs> I can share the love and say, hey, there's a great new product out there that you may not be aware of. Yeah. Uh, 
So, so talking through some of the design and manufacturing processes that typically happened in person, you know, what were like maybe one or two things that were absolutely crucial for you to do over video or, um, you know, using these new collaboration tools that you didn't have to think about before? Yeah, so first, Lee, I, I think, you know, when you're dealing with a new manufacturer, it's really nice for them to see you in person and speak and meet. So not doing that, I think the video was crucial, like above emails and stuff like that. When they see you and they can, you know, see a person and, and then we can explain the brand and they really get a feel. Because when you're trying to do something totally different like this, it's hard for them to understand. Try to chop the bra up and, in a lot of pieces, they haven't seen that before. So we're really trying to get our brand voice and message across that we're trying to create, you know, a new idea. So they really like being able to see them over the video conferencing, Blue Jeans, really helped us like personalize it, get to know them. And then really um, just sort of like, I think it's just a lot easier to express yourself over video conferencing, stuff like that. And I think it just speeds up the process. We did do a lot of mailing things back and forth because it is a physical product. So we do have to see it. So we've mailed a lot of things back and forth from Sri Lanka, tried it on, but then we use the video conferencing as well for the fit models because everything has to be fit tested, you know, tried on a lot of people before we can produce something. So we've been, you know, on blue jeans <laughs> once again, like watching the models, fitting it, like, okay, now move this way, move that way, let's take a screenshot. So we're really like almost there with the person and we're getting all these, you know, good feedback and fit and all that. And then we were able to move forward with new designs without even, you know, seeing it in in person. So, yeah. Yeah. And it's like we're able to have so many people on the call at once and, you know, put up both videos of both models and compare fitting. So for us, it's really vital um, and it's been great. That's awesome. And you're able to really get a feel for I mean, you, you mentioned that you're mailing things back and forth, but. Um, you know, what were some of the things that you really had to to keep in mind that might not really work well virtually, right? So, yeah, go ahead. Well, I think it's just you have to account for more time when you do it this way. Like, so things are just going to take forever because when you mail things back and forth and then, you know, you have to, with all the time changes as well, like trying to find a time that works well for everyone to get on the call. And then just not being able to, you know, see it on a fit model is challenging. But, you know, you do the best that you can try to move forward, get it done. Everyone on the call at the same time, try to just get as clear picture as you can and just move from there. And it helped having the manufacturers on the call, too, when we did the fit testing. Then they can see right away rather than us then emailing them. I think just like getting everybody all on the call moving away from emails just more like pretending like you're in person try to do that as best you can yeah that makes sense so what were some of the other things and, and brad i'd love your perspective on this as well that you think really helped you through this process you know you're not new to working virtually because you are an e-commerce store but obviously this initial phase um is traditionally done in person. So did you have to adopt anything other than a video conferencing tool? And and again, you know, Brad, please chime in mm -hmm. uh, on some of the things that you've seen work with uh, some of your clients as well. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah, uh, Gina and Jen, you can go ahead and answer that question then I'll follow up. I mean, mainly, you know, we did get I think with this whole COVID thing, it, like we got a lot of friends and family involved too, like, and like we were sending them things like using shared albums to upload stuff, um, using a lot of tools that like cloud tools, documents, and just collaborating that way. Um, but mainly, you know, just video conferencing is pretty powerful. And then we just thought of different ways that we can do video conferencing, um, like maybe for a fit test or like a party, launch party, we were thinking, because the swimwear line is new, so we were just, you know, mainly using that. Yeah, and as Jim and Gina were talking about, you know, when you, when you're when you're launching a product online or you're creating an online presence, it's very important to think outside the box. And um, 
if you think outside the box, what is taking place online in your space, in your industry, in your vertical that your competitors may not be doing and then exist in that space? I always like to say, you know, be on the fringe of the trends. And Google Suite has some wonderful collaboration tools. Blue Jeans has been wonderful for us when we're interacting, not just among ourselves and my cohorts within the business, but also with our partners and vendors as well. So you have to have that in place for collaboration. Even if your vendors aren't in Sri Lanka, chances are they might be more US based, but you're still in the current environment, you won't be able to go out, hop on a plane and meet them. So right. it's important to have that video conference set up. Uh, the shared suite of tools, as I mentioned, you know, Jen talked about, there's a number of cloud-based tools. Amazon has a number of them. But when you're when you're talking about creating a platform online, and I've seen the Bra Lab website, it's functional, it's informative, and it looks great. So great job on that. Um, but having a merchant account processor to manage your online payments and some sort of social media presence uh, that you can talk about the launch, talk about what's going to be happening and when on a broader scale. Because when you have a brick and mortar store, when you do go online, your audience expands by a factor of millions. And so you really want to be able to reach them where they are thinking outside the box. If your competitors are on Instagram and you have a compelling argument for using that platform, go ahead and create an Instagram account. And if you don't know exactly how to utilize Instagram, that's a great opportunity for you to use a platform like Upwork. It's a freelance uh, platform where people with varying skills can really help you and embellish what you already have uh, that you can share with the world. So if you don't know how to build a website, there are people to help you do that. At Yahoo Small Business, we have a product called Web Design. And we like to say, you need to spend your time managing your business. We'll spend our time building and managing your website because truly doing both can be a challenge. And so the links for that are going to be uh, provided to all of those who are attendees after the fact. But um, there's a number of other tools besides the platform, besides the social media. Uh, if you don't, <clears throat> pardon me, if you don't currently um, have a resource to manage reviews, because as you move online, there's going to be a lot of online reviews. There are a lot of platforms you can integrate with that you can reach out to to help you manage your reviews. And that way you can stay on top of not just your reviews, but any misinformation that might be out there about your product. So I've mentioned a few of those and uh, more information and resources are available at the Yahoo Small Business Resource Center. We have resources for businesses of all sizes during this COVID nightmare we all find ourselves in. So please be sure to check that out. Yeah, we'll definitely include that link. I think um, Maggie included it in the chat. So that Maggie. Um, so you mentioned uh, product launch. So if we shift gears and think about, okay, you've gotten through the manufacturing and design process. Now, how do you actually get this product out there <laughs> when um, you know everything is done virtually? So maybe talk us through what a product launch would have looked like pre-COVID and then how are you thinking about it now? What's going to change, um, you know, once your swimwear line and some of these new uh, products are ready to go to market? Yeah, I think Brad mentioned we do use a lot of tools on our website, like in addition to what he said, like the live chat that we've added just to get more involved. Facebook, Instagram is a good way to build up uh, momentum before a launch, um, which we boosted up and made sure we have a more robust presence on there, just being virtual and stuff like that. Um, and just creating like a wait list, building up your email list before a product launch. And, you know, if there is a delay, just communicating things with your customers. And then when the launch, you know, when, when we do get new products, we want to give like um, our VIP customers, like special access, Stuff like that, like referral programs, and just um, just do a massive email campaign from the list that we've been building up, and just keep in contact with people. I think 
touch base with our customer. And traditionally, were your product launches done all online prior to COVID? So it doesn't sound like anything's really changed. Um, yeah, it's always been an online business, but I think it's just with the COVID, it's kind of like giving us an opportunity because more people are online. So like, there's a, I think we're just like making it more robust, like than we did before. Yeah. And it's like, if we can use these videos to do our launches, I mean, we get more ingrained with the customer and they can hear directly from us, kind of do like a question and answer and all of that to get, you know, more like exciting launch yeah i think the COVID thing has kind of sparked more present or, or openness for people to get on these platforms like we could do a launch party and like have a party room at blue jeans like and have you know do it with our customers or even we were thinking about using some of our best customers that wanted to do fit testing and we have them in a room with us or special live chat with shopping while people are shopping for certain occasions. Just like thinking, you know, further into the virtual yeah. space. Yeah, it, it sounds like traditionally it might have been more difficult getting people to attend a party virtually or engage with you online, whereas now you have all of these uh, robust tools that maybe you didn't know existed before and people that are, they don't have a choice. <laughs> they have to engage with you online, right? So, um, yeah, and, you know, yeah. yeah, but maybe now it's more about actually engaging with them one-to-one -one conversation or, um, you know, having different staging, like you, you mentioned Blue Jeans events. So, you know, we're on events right now, you have the ability to chat yeah. with people um, during your launch party, but then you can also, uh, integrate Facebook Live and live stream this to anyone who's interested on Facebook um, yeah. to help build your brand there, right? Yeah, it's really a neat feature. So uh, we had a question come in. Um, when it comes to launching a product, do you establish an audience that is interested in the services you offer? How do you start from scratch, maybe? Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure uh, that's <laughs> I think like, you know, you have a website that sort of, you know, tells your story that's saying why you exist and what you're trying to provide for people and what problem you're trying to solve. So you have a nice website. And I think getting on social media is the next that you would do and try to like engage with certain customers that are interested in your product by using hashtags or any of this stuff to find people and just start creating um, content. So that people can find you and then you want to capture people's emails and then you know when you and then communicate and then when something comes out i think the best way is you know you post it on social media from what you've built up and email campaigns are great i think tools as well yeah and i mean with facebook it's like you take you know the emails that you're capturing and then you're able to create look-alike audiences from that so um it can capture more people that are interested in your items. And we're talking about a product, right? So you're selling actual goods, but do you sell services as well? Or is that something that you've considered? And would that be different? We don't, but I've read a lot of articles and like I, I subscribe to content services. Um, and I think it's just about just the in-depth you know, research that you're providing or content with those types of things, you could, it's just like a constant, you have to constantly update them and create new content. So that's a little bit different. Us, we, it's all products. So yeah, we have to, but we also have an organic like blog that we try to write about bra issues, but it's not really, nobody pays for that, but it's just something that we want to provide to our customers. Cause you know, like sizing and a lot of people have questions about their bras. So we try to write and just provide people with extra, not just a product, but a little bit more. Yeah. Yeah. And it's a pretty personal custom thing, right? So. It's, yeah, that's the other thing. Yeah, it's a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> people so, are really interested in it. Things. And so I think the biggest thing is like people get really excited about if you saw the need in the market or like you're providing a solution. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. 
Yeah, um, well, and and there are a couple of other things uh, besides what Gina and Jen mentioned, all wonderful. They touched on Facebook, and Facebook is a great way to really identify whether or not your prospective product is going to have an audience. It's no longer the day of if you build it, they will come. Why? Because there's millions of competitors out there. So they already have a certain section of the audience. And so you wanna look for your own and you want to be that go-to person. So if you're knowledgeable about something that you think will sell, go ahead and as uh, Janet mentioned, start writing articles about it. Prove that you are a knowledge leader, a knowledge expert in that space. Go online, there's a number of forums you can join with similar topics and you begin to weigh in and become that knowledge leader. They begin to look to you. And then you start looking at your product and say, how can I bring this to market? If you have one product, maybe you have a complimentary product. If you, if you sell bats, baseball bats, you might wanna sell baseball gloves. Complimentary products and being a, a knowledge leader in that space is really important. And what you were saying, Amanda, you might even wanna create a service around that product. You know, if you sell uh, bras and there's been a compelling uh, market for that. Maybe you can start looking at some service-based issues that can supplement that or complement that. So there's a number of opportunities out there. There's a new idea out there every day that goes to market. So there is no shortage of that. And think about, um, I like to talk about the four factors of impulse, you know, the Jones effect, uh, indifference, and then you have the fear of loss, the FOMO, and sense of urgency. Social media has taken FOMO to the next level. Yeah. And so if you can really tap into an audience, tap into what their needs are emotionally, because people buy on emotion, then you'll have a captive audience that you can reach out and sell to. Yeah, absolutely. Social media is um, is so key right now, right? Like it yeah. has to be a core part of your marketing strategy. So, yeah. um, Google search and stuff too is something else. Like if you're writing articles, you're going to rank higher, you know, with the organic search and Google search ads and stuff like that. So yeah, cranking out content is always good. Absolutely. And, and we did have a question um, about lookalike audiences. I have a definition in my mind as to what you meant by that, but Perhaps you can just elaborate as to what that means to you and how do you go about building out a lookalike audience? Well, so you, Facebook takes all of the data from, you know, everyone's data is all over the internet basically. And they take that, capture it, and then they find other people that are similar basically. And then you can target your ads to them and then it keeps evolving it and changing it and it just keeps finding people that are like that audience and it keeps fine-tuning and you create a wider you cast your net wider kind of um to gather those people and then you know you keep seeing what's working and who's liking your product who's you know so so it's part of a, a it's part of Facebook technology. Yeah, yeah. Technology. she's talking about Facebook ads. Like, if you're running an ad, that you can take people who have purchased off your website and create an audience that looks it's called a lookalike audience of people with the same demographic that are most likely to purchase from your website. So this is just an ad campaign that she's talking about. Yeah, but it's a way to you know get more customers, get the word out to people that like your product mm -hmm. right because if they have the same traits mm -hmm. as someone who's already bought the idea yeah. is that they would also be interested right yeah exactly just creating like a more niche audience of the same types of people right cool um thank you for that and then another question uh is your website user friendly with clickbank and other similar affiliate sites think maybe what's your your strategy there? We are not doing any affiliate marketing right now. Yeah. <laughs> Is that something that you 
that, that would work for you or have you not thought about it? Um, not on our website. I think if, uh, if someone else, like it would be the opposite, like where we would be on someone else's website and then, you know, we would pay, we would do that affiliation mm -hmm. like that in that way. Yeah. yeah we have yeah. thought about it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Brad, any insights from you on this? Yeah, similar to what Janet said, we do have different blogs and whatnot that talk about services we provide, or they might even talk about topics related to the services we provide. And then you can click through, and we have a number of affiliates under Commission Junction uh, that we work with. And so, um, and so we, we, we do engage in affiliate uh, marketing in that way. And affiliates are, are a wonderful way of being in the world and online. Many people have made businesses of creating a blog, writing about various topics that are useful for a, very, for a different product, whether it's insurance, whether it's uh, personal uh, related products like bras and, and somewhat. And then they have links to the actual product store, the e-commerce store that you can click on and then they get a, a certain percentage. Um, but yeah, affiliate marketing is a, is a great way to exist in the world, to do online. So we're almost at time, actually. That went by really fast. <laughs> um, so uh, maybe we can just wrap up and, and before we do our final thoughts, if anyone has a question, uh, please put it into the Q&A or the chat. And in the meantime, uh, Gina, Jennifer, maybe you can provide a couple of key takeaways that the audience can leverage to uh, create a virtual go-to-market strategy, whether it's the creation, manufacturing, or actual promotion part of it. What are some top takeaways? I mean, I think it's, you know, ha having, going through COVID, having these resources are just key because you can get stuff done still you know, you don't have to do it in person. You can mail stuff back and forth, virtually get it done. And so I would say, don't be discouraged by this because people are still working, they're still producing and manufacturing. You might have delays, but it's still worth, you know, pushing through and just saying, you know, I mean, as far as the customer part of it is just like being, having that online presence, being available, responding, having live chat, more ways, points of contact are, or key for them, so, yeah. A lot of people are buying online, a lot more than yeah. maybe they used to, right? Exactly. So, yeah, and like we said, it's like you have people's attention now, and this comes with like, for us, like retail buyers or, you know, different people in that side of the world too, that it's like we can get their attention. They're not out doing all these things. <laughs> so it, right. it is good time for that in a way, you know. Right. Yeah. right. <laughs> and I guess the key is really just cutting through the noise and making sure your brand is top of mind since yeah. everything is online now. Right. Yeah, and there's a lot more, you know, competition like like so your Facebook ads are getting more expensive, the Google ads are getting more expensive. So you really have to have a solid brand, a solid story, a unique product and like organic content. And having those right tools and strategy in place allows you to create more content and get more creative, right? So right. Yeah, exactly. the foundation um, allows you to get ahead, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Yeah. Thank you. And Brad, um, any last comments or suggestions from you? Yeah, going online at this point in time is a is a it's it's a challenge, but it can also be um, very very lucrative and beneficial to the e-commerce store owner um, because you have a captive audience, uh, maybe not necessarily based on their willingness, but we're stuck. You know what I mean? In many ways, many of us are stuck at home, and we have more time to go online. We have more time to explore various options so if you aren't online i would say going online would be definitely beneficial to you and your business if you currently have one if you don't have a business and you've been thinking about going online now would also be a good time because once again you have a captive audience now is a great time to 
really do your research and think about how you can exist online on the fringe of the trends outside of what your competitors are doing. And you can take advantage of some of the audiences that are online that may not know about various uh, tactics in the market or in your market, your specific vertical. Um, so that's a, that's a captive audience that you can uh, maximize and take advantage of. Uh, going online in this day and age, like I said, a lot of times it's not even a choice. It's something that you must do. Uh, there are a number of technologies available. I know we have what we call pay it forward. And uh, if you've been thinking about starting an online business and you don't have a brick and mortar, what you can do is go to our website and we give you a free domain, a free website. And many of the free resources we offer are free for a year so that you can maximize that opportunity today, regardless of whether a vaccine comes out within the next six months, you can establish an online presence and start growing from that. So there's a number of opportunities and information in our resource center. We have a lot of information and resources uh, relating to companies that can assist you on your online growth with loans, uh, with specific COVID-19 resources that are available to small and medium-sized businesses. So either way you look at it, now's a great time to go online, uh, become a, uh, an, a, a customer of a, of a company like, um, you know, Blue Jeans, and so you can use their webinar and event capabilities to talk to your audience. You know, if you don't have an email service provider, we offer a business mail uh, resource that you can utilize and you can use constant contact to reach out to a larger email audience. So you're not just sending individual emails and trying to make an impact that way. So like I said, great time for it. Uh, take advantage of the resources available and you'll be happy you did. That's great. Thanks, Brad. And I think you actually answered a couple that came in. So um, appreciate that. And then uh, we do have some links that we will share out uh, afterwards to um, help people get started with all of those items that you mentioned. There's a lot there, a lot of resources, right? <laughs> and um, there was one more question that came in, which I think we'll probably have to create another webinar about this one. Um, and it's about gauging the mindset of the consumer post-pandemic. There's a lot that we could unpack there. So um, if anyone has any any ideas there, um, you know, please share. But, but again, I think um, maybe that's a topic we can take <laughs> for next time. Yeah, yeah it may be a little <laughs> beyond the scope of this webinar. But, but like I said, people purchase, people engage based on emotion. So Really look at ways you can tap into that and, and, and take your current um, uh, friend and family environment and, and really reach out to them and get their thoughts on what they're thinking, what's happening in their worlds. And then you can extrapolate that into a larger audience. Um, and I'm sure you probably, if you have a small business, you already have an audience that you can reach out to. You might even create a survey to get the temperature of what's been happening. And there's a lot of free survey tools out there as well that you can use. Yeah, good idea. Yeah, right. that's something we're doing too, is surveying our customers and we get a lot of good information and then we can take that and develop, you know, what they really want. So that's a good, good thing to do. Great, well, um, we're a little over time, so, uh, we'll wrap it up. Uh, Gina, Jennifer, any final thoughts? I just think like Brad said, right now, it's a great time to go online. We we did have two clothing stores and we created websites for them because like Brad was saying, it doesn't cost you that much to do it. You might as well just start working on it. There's no you know, time frame that you have to do it. There's You're not under pressure, but it's easy to start you know, a website and just create your presence and do it as fast or as slow as you want. So. Yeah. Great. Well, thank you guys and congratulations on doing everything you did. <laughs> um, we appreciate your insights. And uh, as we mentioned, we'll share out this recording 
post event. So um, thank you again so much for joining Brad, Jennifer, and Paul. Thank Have you so much. Day.